cool, huh? Uh, bag of steel. Sort of. Hello everyone, Desert Gold. Well, I'm sure you've all seen the uh, magnet and the steel core type ammo demonstration, but uh, I couldn't resist. Uh, before I get started, uh, today we're going to be uh, uh, discussing the ideas or considerations, as they say, um, involved with reloading an armor piercing rounds. Before I get started, I uh, wanted to touch on a subject that I had hoped to avoid, but um, in a number of my videos, I've get, gotten comments about uh, my shaking hands and uh, I appear nervous. Or creative commenters mentioned that it looks like I drink too much coffee, drink too much beer. Um, none of that is actually true. Um, while I am not really very comfortable, as you see other YouTubers that are more at home in front of the camera. Um, my shaking comes from a, a disease called essential tremors. Um, there's not really a cure for it, so you just deal with it. So I uh, thought that I would get this out of the way so during the course of the video if you see me bringing up something close to the lens and it appears your eyes are going back and forth trying to keep up with the object that that would be the reason. All right, so we got that out of the way. Um, it's another balmy desert out here, another balmy day in the desert, I should say. Um, already started uh, with the beer, um, nice cold beer, got uh, some nice baby backs on the uh, Smoker, so I thought I'd get this put out real quick and see if I can keep it short and sweet and without uh, too much boredom involved for you guys. Um, there's a number of things to consider when uh, thinking about reloading armor piercing rounds uh, the mechanics of it, the um, legalities of it. There's a number of issues that you need to uh, address before you just go out and buy a bunch of um, steel core ammo. Understanding even the principles behind it, uh, where, uh, for instance, what most people might consider a PMO, um, or for what they conceive to be armor piercing. Um, and come in contact with most often would be something like American Eagles M856, no, I'm sorry, 855. This is the 856, which is their tracer round. And 855 is obviously their steel core round. So let's take a look at them real quick. You can tell distinguishing characteristics of a tracer round. The tip will be usually, I should say, painted red or orange. The 855 round has the universal green tip paint on it, indicating there is a steel core in there. On the table here, I've got some uh, 308s and I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but uh, they are um, orange tipped, so that indicates that those are uh, tracer rounds. Now, while the steel core in this is um, meant to be more of a penetrator than, say, your standard lead cord round. It isn't much 
better at it than uh, a good quality uh, five, five, six round. Um, the Brunel uh, hardness of the corn here is not much harder than uh, probably cold anger steel. Now, on the other hand, if you were to go into rifle calibers, this is M2 ball ammo uh, pulled to World, World War II surplus 30 out 6. Um, see flat base and the black tip on it. Now the steel core in this is a lot different than the steel core in the, uh, in the green tip. It probably has a Brunel somewhere around uh, 5 to 700. It will penetrate uh, AR 500 steel. Um, probably up to a quarter half inch thick. Um, another thing I wanted to get into is You'll notice that these are some of my M1 Grand 30 out 6 black tips. Uh, I've loaded those up as AP ammo. The legalities around uh, loading up 308 is a gray area and my advice is probably not to really get involved with it. Um, the ATF has a myriad of definitions as to what they will consider legal and illegal uh, for AP ammo. And um, the bottom line on most of it is if the round is available for a pistol, you cannot use the AP projectile in a pistol caliber. Now that being said, the 308 has always been a rifle caliber, still is. Recently, however, they have uh, come out with 308 pistols, like the Caltech 556 pistol. Personally, I have no idea why anybody would want to take a 308 and shoot it out of a pistol caliber. It just doesn't make sense to me, but there you have it. So, because of the availability of a pistol version of the 308, you start running into re reloading uh, quantities as far as is it legal or not. I can guarantee you that if you do reload it, you would better not try to resell it. Um, for instance, at one of the gun shows, I mean, the uh, trade shows that uh, you can buy and sell ammunition and gun parts, because should you do that, you've uh, actually made yourself a manufacturer. You do not have the licensing to manufacture armor personal rounds. ATF will sit on you like the setting sun. So just, uh, just stay away from it. Now, what are some of the considerations that make AP ammo reloading a little more challenging? Well, the first thing is the core. The core is steel. It's not a uniform lead core and um, therefore the shape and ballistics of the bullet will look different. Here's an example of this. This is, uh, like I said, a standard uh, 165 grain steel core, 30 out 6 or 30 caliber bullet. This is the same 
grain weight by Barnes, their TTSX um, all copper, 165 grains. You put them side by side, and it's it's almost hard to tell, but you can see there's a definite difference in the shape on the bearing surface. Um, you see only one cannula on the um, steel core, and you see three on the Barnes bullet. The Barnes also being a, well this is actually a boat tail, so um, even if it were uh, a flat base bullet, the shape and dynamics of the bullet are different because of the core, of the, uh, different weights of the cores. Now, what does that mean? That means that uh, the bearing surface, which is the flat surface, is different. And the O-give, which is where the bullet starts tapering in to head into the throat, starts at a different area. Sorry, I'm not keeping this in frame. What that means is that the loader has to be aware of where to seat the bullet with respect to both pressure, with respect also to the type of powder that uh, he's using, and uh, the accuracy which he intends to derive out of the round. Obviously in my um, crimp part two, where the uh, head spacing of the round based on whether it's a neck cartridge or a um, straight wall. Obviously these are all neck cartridges, so they are shoulder head space. That being said, the consideration still has to be made on case overall length COL. The bullet still has to be seated so that the uh, round will chamber. So if you have different bearing surfaces with different uh, places to seat, then you have to adjust for pressure with your powder choices. Powder choices for uh, the 30 out 6 uh, for something like this M1 Garand right here. Back in the day when that uh, rifle was uh, being used, this was the round they were using, the AP black tip. You can still buy them today, in fact, uh, I've got a old can full of them there. But the thing to consider with that is the gas block on the Garand is made for today's pressures and high speed velocities that we're getting with today's powders. Back in that day, um, we didn't want to get over 2,500 feet per second. Usually under that would be preferable even before you start messing up the uh, gas system in the, in the rifle. So uh, for consideration with the M1 Garand type rifle, you have something like IMR's 4895. It is a mil spec powder that uh, actually is almost identical to what was used in the um, M1 Grand ammo at the time. For higher speed and other other uh, Considerations say for uh, 308 or 30 out 6 that's going to be used in rifles other than an um, older rifle that you don't want to mess up. 
good considerations would be reloader 15 and bargain. Excellent choices for a pressure burn rate for this bullet weight and the uh, accuracy out of them is actually very good, even with steel tip. Which most of you realize the steel tip's going to be a lot, a lot less dynamically stable compared to, say, tournament uh, type bullets. Tournament loading, but um, you don't, you don't concerned about that uh, for the purposes that this, this round was put together. Anyway, um, I want to keep it short. I know I'm probably muddling the water here, <coughs> excuse me, here, but um, if you uh, do have questions, comments, uh, shoot them in, I'll, no pun intended, and I'll uh, see if I get an answer quickly back to you. Uh, the, the bottom line is if you're going to get involved with AP ammo, stick in a legal range, get all your data put together on the pressures, the powders, respect to your bullet weight that you choose and um, work your way up to your uh, intended goal in 10th varying um, increments. So I hope uh, I've kind of not messed things up for you guys. Uh, there's just a lot to cover. Uh, eventually I'll probably do a uh, actual reloading video where I'm loading some of these up. but. Uh, that I've already had some here today. I didn't think it would be a good idea. Anyway, this is Desert Gold. I've got to get out to the pool and barbecue. More beer. So you, all of you uh, have fun and be safe. Desert Gold. Uh,